Liquid coolers with digital displays showing vital PC stats like temperature have been available for quite some time now. But why limit that technology to just liquid cooling? What about those of us that prefer the reliability and simplicity of air cooling? Deep Cool's thought of that, and I've got their solution right here. Hey YouTube, I'm Danny, welcome to the channel. I'd like to take a moment to introduce you to Deep Cool's newest digital series, which is based on their widely popular all black zero dark design. These come in four different models and just recently three of those have now become offered in white as well. This video is focused on the AK400, which is a single tower cooler with an all new digital display. It features four direct contact heat pipes, a unique black matrix fin design, and a 120 millimeter high performance, low noise level fluid dynamic bearing fan. The highlight, of course, is a sleek, low profile status display with ARGB LED strips. I'm gonna make this the most in-depth review possible. I'll do a quick unboxing, show you how to install it on both an AMD and Intel motherboard, and don't forget the software. That's right, it needs software to make the display work. What do you think? It's magic? Finally, I'll go over thermal and noise testing results and wrap it all up with my thoughts on whether you should make a purchase. Don't worry, I know it's a lot. Timestamps are included below in the description, so feel free to jump ahead to things you're interested in or go back and rewatch stuff. I was gonna talk price at the end, but I figured it's kind of an important detail to know while watching the rest of the video. The MSRP for the AK400 Digital is $49.99 US. It's kind of creeping up there a bit for an air cooler. Is it worth it? Let's find out. I love Deep Cool's clean design for their packaging. It's simple, yet effective. Inside, they've got all your mounting hardware right up top. First thing in the bag is AMD's AM4 and AM5 risers and screws. You use the same risers for both. Then you've got Intel's mounting hardware. They include screws and two different risers. You have two extra brackets for additional fan mounting. Then you've got the metal cooler mounting bracket, as well as an adjustable Intel backplate. The next thing in the box is their easy to read instruction manual that has pictures for both AMD and Intel. But what do you need this for? You've got me. The last thing in the box is the cooler itself. It's already pre-assembled and comes with thermal compound pre-applied. So you won't need to buy any if you're thinking about using this cooler in your own build. That's really all there is to the unboxing. The installation on the other hand is a little bit more complicated. Let's cover AMD first. I'm gonna show you this on an AM5 motherboard, but they're basically the same. You'll start by removing the four screws that hold the stock mounting brackets on, as with most aftermarket solutions for AMD. Then take off those brackets. I like to keep them in the motherboard box for later, just in case. Place the four plastic risers onto the mount points on your motherboard. Then place the cooler mounting bracket onto those risers. You'll use the screws included in the bag the AMD risers came in to bolt everything down. At this point, the fan needs to come off the cooler. Pop the metal clips off both sides of the cooler and you'll release the fan. Place the cooler evenly onto the CPU and tighten the two screws onto the retainer plate around the CPU socket. Alternate back and forth between each screw, making about two turns each time until they're tight. They'll stop spinning when they are. This provides even tension for the cooler. Make sure the display and RGB cables are tucked inside the guide channel in the center of the cooler so you don't pinch anything in the fan during installation. Reinstall the fan with the clips the same way you took it off. Lastly, plug in your CPU fan header, five volt, three pin addressable RGB header, and the USB connector to your motherboard. Intel is fairly similar with a few more steps. Deep Cool includes an Intel backplate since their motherboards don't come with them. It's adjustable and has two different settings for installation. You've got LGA 1700 and everything else. Insert your backplate through the motherboard holes. My demonstration motherboard has both LGA 1200 and 1700 holes. That's because ASUS thinks ahead. Place the matching risers to your socket onto each post. They have numbers engraved on the top to help out. The textured ones are LGA 1700 and smooth ones are for all the others, in case you're following along. The rest of the installation is the same. Place the cooler mounting bracket onto the risers. Then screw it all down with the included screws from the same bag your risers came in. The fan needs to come off the cooler to prep for installation. 
Pop the metal clips off both sides of the cooler and you'll release the fan. Place the cooler evenly onto the CPU and tighten the two screws onto the retainer plate around the CPU socket. Alternate back and forth between each screw, making about two turns each time until they're tight. They'll stop spinning when they are. This provides even tension for the cooler. Make sure the display and RGB cables are inside the guide channel in the center of the cooler so you don't pinch anything in the fan during installation. Reinstall the fan with the clips the same way you took it off. Lastly, plug in your CPU fan header, 5 volt, 3 pin addressable RGB header, and the USB connector to your motherboard. Oh, real quick, if you're getting value from today's video, give us a like down below and subscribe for more PC related content like component reviews or even PC build guides, because that's the kind of things we do here. Software is the one thing that I was worried about when setting this thing up. You'll need to swing over to DeepCool's website to grab this software to run the digital display. Otherwise, it won't do anything. I'll link it below to make things easier for you. On the AK400's product page, find the tab labeled Downloads. This will jump you to the bottom of the page where you'll need to click DeepCool Digital Setup.zip. Download and run this install file. It only took about a minute to install. It's automatically set up to run whenever you boot up your PC. Therefore, there's no extra software to learn, nothing to create an account for or settings to change. It just works. This is the type of software that I like. It's simple, quick, and useful. If you do want to tweak things, there's a few options you can mess with. If you click the icon tray, right click on the DeepCool logo, and it gives you a couple options. You can switch the display from temperature to utilization or automatic, which makes it switch back and forth every few seconds between the two. You have the option to select Celsius or Fahrenheit, and you can turn on or off the alarm control, which will flash the display if your temps get too high. Not sure what that is since mine never reached it, but there's no way you can set a custom number, so you get what you get. Let's move on to thermal performance. Now, if you currently own or you've been looking into the AK400 non-digital versions, these numbers might look suspiciously similar. For thermal testing, I chose one of AMD's new AM5 CPUs, the Ryzen 5 7600X. This processor doesn't come with a thermal solution in the box, so I figured since the AK400 is DeepCool's entry-level digital cooler, I'd see how it fares. The 7600X has a 105 watt TDP, by the way. That's actually pretty high. I performed a few different temperature readings to try to cover most scenarios. The average idle temperature that I saw using the 7600X and the AK400 was 39 degrees Celsius, which isn't too bad. The max temperature during a 10-minute Cinebench R23 CPU stress test was 89 degrees Celsius. Now, one thing to note is AMD states that Ryzen 7000 series is designed to run at a lifetime 95 degrees Celsius. Not sure how much I believe that, but that's what I saw in my testing, so I've kind of got to go with it. There's entire videos about the thermal headroom and thermal limit and stuff like that of these new Ryzen 7000 CPUs. I never did any testing with it personally because this is honestly my first one I've ever gotten. So maybe that's a video for the future. I also tested during a gaming load. 60 degrees Celsius was the average CPU temperature with the max hitting 88. Pretty good results for a small, simple air cooler. But honestly, that's what I would expect for $50. Noise levels aren't really something I can talk about, so why don't I just show you? The only thing I'm gonna say is the noise was barely noticeable until you have those 95 Celsius degree spikes that AM5 is known for, which causes the fan to boost up to 100% speed for about five seconds. If you mess around in the BIOS and change your spin down time and your max fan speed, it's an easy fix. So what do I think of the AK400 Digital? And this could honestly be my opinion for the entire lineup. First thing I wanna talk about is the software. I was honestly skeptical at first because I didn't know if this cooler with a digital display would be a gimmick or something I would enjoy. But with how easy the software was to install and the fact that I didn't really have to do anything with it if I didn't want to made it a breeze for me. Simplicity is the key. Remember that. My only gripe would be that you have to plug in three separate cables for an air cooler. But honestly, I understand why. 
I mean, you have to be able to control the digital display, the RGB, and the fan itself. They did a great job adding the little cable channel and tucking it behind the fan. It's as easy as can be. While I'm talking about the display, there's one thing to note, and it really wasn't a problem, just kind of a gee whiz information. I like to use a program called Core Temp for all my CPU temperature monitoring. The AK400's display was one degree higher than Core Temp was reporting. Not a big deal, and honestly, it could just be a polling period delay, but in the interest of transparency, I thought I'd share. Okay, last thing to cover, let's talk price. $50 for an air cooler with a digital display. Is it worth it? Well, considering the non-digital at the time of this filming costs $43.99, you're technically only paying $6 for the digital functionality and RGB end caps. Whether you want it or not, Deepcool has an option for you. And that's really what it's all about, giving customers options. Speaking of options, orange risers, really? If you forgot or skipped ahead, the AMD mounting solution uses orange risers. Come on, Deep Cool, work with me here. Wow, that was a lot. I hope I covered all your curiosities and questions. Speaking of questions, if you have any more, feel free to throw them down below in the comments. If I know the answer or I can find out, I'll respond. Also, if you're interested in any more PC hardware videos or builds to fit your budget, I'll leave some videos right over here that you can check out next because I'm spent and this video is done. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, I'm watching the rise, and I wouldn't say I'm shocked, cause I'm hardly surprised. This one's for the ride, this one's for who knew I